the ball down. The last gasp effort was short, and the Sooners never recovered from this ball game, losing their first contest in NCAA play to the Dayton Flyers. The loss left the Big 8's player of the year, Wyman Tisdale, in dismay. But this year, the Big 8's all-time leading scorers all smiled, as his team ranked fourth in the country is already repeated as regular season champs, and after thrashing Missouri last night, are again in the tournament finals. Tisdale's teammate, Anthony Bowie, led the Sooners last night with 25 points. The explosive Sooners will meet surprising Iowa State, who derailed 10th-ranked Kansas last night, led by Barry Stevens, the league's number two all-time scorer. Stevens had 25 points. The man who holds the Cyclone team together is Jeff Hornacek. The team's floor leader was also an outstanding shooter. Last night's victory put Iowa State into the tournament finals for the first time ever. Can they pull another upset today? The site is Kemper Arena, the event, the Big 8 Tournament Championship. Iowa State against Oklahoma. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. Iowa State, before a record crowd, upset Kansas last night by 16 points. They're trying to get into the NCAA Tournament for the first time in 41 years. Oklahoma in the other 10, ranked number four, feels if they win today, they will clinch a top four seed in the 64-team field that we'll announce tomorrow on CBS. Our broadcasting partner is Doug Collins, and Doug, Oklahoma is explosive. Well, you're talking about the number one scoring team in the nation, Gary, averaging over 91 points per game. Last night, they set a big eight record by scoring 100 points for the ninth time this season. But I feel their keys is the ability to make you play their game, get into a run-and-shoot type game. This is the winningest team in the history of Iowa State, the first time they've won 20 ball games. Well, they have a very exciting team. They have excellent quickness. They have great chemistry. They play very well together. The two guards, Stevens, and Hornacek will be key, must be very selective in their shots today, and they also have to find a way to rebound. These two clubs met in the regular season of play, and Oklahoma won both of those games. We'll be back to introduce you to the starting lineups in just a moment. CBS Sports presents NCAA Basketball. Today's Big 8 Conference Championship game is sponsored by Chevrolet, who invites you to see, drive, and live today's Chevrolet. Stroh's and Stroh Light, fire-brewed for smoother taste. Had you can see three six-foot-five performers. Hornacek, he's the floor leader. Stevens, the all-Big 8 performer. And this is Oklahoma. They are outstanding athletes. Tisdale, three times the Big 8 Conference Player of the Year. Bowie, the junior college transfer. Chu Kennedy, Linwood Davis, who's another junior college player. And Tim McAllister, the 6'3 sophomore out of Gary, Indiana. The officials from the Big 8 Conference, John Leinbach from St. Joseph, Missouri. John DeBrow from Wichita, Kansas. And Ron Spittler from Hutchinson. And Doug Collins, if there's any one team that has benefited so much from the junior college ranks, it's got to be this Oklahoma team. Well, you look at the starting lineup, Gary, and you said Linwood Davis, Anthony Bowie, and I feel that Anthony Bowie has stepped in and has a big impact on this Oklahoma team as big as Walter Berry has had with St. John's. Billy Tuck, the Big 8 Coach of the Year again this year. He's won it the last two seasons. His team now, with a victory today, would tie the record for wins in a year at Oklahoma. Last year, his club was 29 and 5, and they stand 28 and 5 going into today. And not a lot of people figured this team would be around today, Iowa State. They played an absolutely marvelous basketball game against Kansas last night. Gary, the thing that impressed me, they picked up every loose ball, and although they were outsized underneath, they out rebounded Kansas 35 to 23. Johnny Orr, the wonderful gentleman who did such an outstanding job in Michigan before coming to Iowa State. Here's how Iowa State got here. They defeated Colorado, then Kansas last night, and they led by eight, and clearly are in command of that game all the way. Oklahoma blasted Oklahoma State. You can see they've been over 100 points in their two Big 8 tournament games. And so going up the center circle will be the All-American Wayman Tisdale. He'll be opposed by Sam Hill. Tisdale had 22 points in the game last night, and he controls the tip off to Chu Kennedy. Here's Davis out of Lorenzo Junior College, Bowie out of Seminole Junior College in Oklahoma. Davis has started 10 of the last 11 games, and he's been the final ingredient in the Sooner team. Iowa State opening up in a tough man-to-man -to -man defense. Here's Tisdale, and on the arm is Barry Stevens committing the foul. 
So they'll inbound the ball, and Tisdale always has a crowd around him when he gets the ball inside. Well, look for Iowa State today. Anytime the ball goes in the post, to dive a man in there, force the man inside to kick the ball back out, and Linwood Davis is going to have a lot of open shots today if he takes them. In fact, that's what Johnny Orr said. We'll let him take those shots. Baseline to Chew Kennedy. Tisdale tries to keep it alive, but Barry Stevens has it for the Cyclone. Interesting to see physically how Iowa State will hold up. They played late last night after 11 o'clock when that game was over. Here is Dreyer missing badly. Tisdale on the rebound. Linwood Davis off to Tim McAllister. He was the Big 8 newcomer of the year a season ago. Excellent outside shooter. And over the back is Tisdale. Wayman with his first foul. Iowa State, good position on the boards that time. Kept Tisdale away from the basket. He had to come over the top. Again, Oklahoma on the perimeter with a jump shot. They like to attack you from the inside out, not outside in. The pressure by Oklahoma. Johnny Orr said this is the only team that really bothered him all year long with pressure tactics. Barry Stevens. Barry Stevens, an exciting player. Johnny Orr told us today that he has electrified his program. There's McAllister. Sam Hill goes up. He can't get the block. McAllister. And it's all even at two. Here's Stevens again. Stevens, number two all-time scorer. Only second to Tisdale. They both passed Mike Evans of Kansas State who held that mark for some time. Gary, this is the fast of the game right now. They've got to be very selective. In fact, Johnny Orr told us this morning, the more selective his team is, the better they shoot from the floor, and that's very uncharacteristic. If they don't get the break, they're going to take some time off the clock and get their shot. They need to run that clock down at least to 10 second mark before they start shooting. Here's Grayer again. Lean in over to Kennedy. Jeff Grayer, 6'5", freshman out of Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan has been good to Johnny Orr. Two players on the starting five. And he's had players for the years when he was at Michigan that came out of there. Wayman Britt to name one. Here's Linwood Davis. That's the shot they're going to let him have. Harry Stevens on the rebound. Hornacek saves it into Peterson. Backing out of Stevens. That's a great sign right there for Iowa State. Barry Stevens starting out with a hot hand. The thing that's impressed me also, they're getting him his shots, Gary. They know he's their man. Cyclones up by four. They're not impressed at all with this Oklahoma team. Sam Hill on the steal. Here is Hornacek. He's the floor leader. Always under control. Stevens again. He thought that was going in. He'd headed back up the floor. Well, he's excited right now. He feels it. And Jeff Hornacek looking for him on the floor. Bowie at 25, out to Chew Kennedy. There's Davis, look at him sag off of him, Doug. He's gonna have to hit that shot, Gary, because Hornacek was diving in on the post. He's fronting Wayman Tisdale, giving the man help. Linwood Davis is gonna have that wide open 15-foot jumper all day. Sometimes those are the toughest to hit when you're wide open. Well, you start thinking about it. There's Stevens, he hits another one, and Barry Stevens, who was 8 of 13 last night, has picked up where he left off. Well, he's already taken five shots early in this ball game. We've only played three and a half minutes. 8 to 4, the Cyclones. 16.45 to go in the first half. Iowa State hit 4 of 6 from the field. There's another steal, and then he lost it. Sam Hill had it, and then he couldn't hang on. Let's look at how they're sagging in on Tisdale. We're going to see Sam Hill behind him trying to three-quarter him, and he did a nice job with those long arms when he saw the ball in the air to come around in front and get the steal. That's a great play by Sam Hill. Tisdale, they try to get up against his legs to negate some of that leaping ability. Shot by McAllister, followed nicely inside by Chu Kennedy. That's the killer right there, Gary. You can't give up those second shots. They forced a tough little jumper in the lane and just an easy, uncontested layup for the rebound. That's why Iowa State handling the pressure, and as I say that, Stevens walks to the ball. Iowa State's doing a very good thing there, although they got a turnover. Gary, as they're breaking the press, they're ending up when they get across half court with the ball in Stevens' hands. An offensive player who can do something with it after they beat the press. The open floor type of player. Here's Tisdale, followed by Boyd. Boy, is he good at that. He didn't get that one to drop, however. Here comes Stevens. Back is Davis. Stevens, he's fouled. Foul will go on McAllister. Barry Stevens had his head down that time. He was going one on three, just was going to take it to the basket. Tim McAllister tried to block the shot. And Barry Stevens drew the personal foul. He's one on three, Gary. We're going to take a chance to look. Davis is back. Bowie's back. McAllister. He did a nice job hanging and drawing the contact to get to the free throw line. Barry Stevens, in the estimation of Johnny Orr, has electrified our program. Second all-time leading scorer in the Big A Conference. 
He's had two back-to-back 25-point games. This is there. He's a fine free throw shooter. He's over 80% for the year. Yes, he is. It looked like that time he tried to get off the line too quickly. Gary, sometimes when you're at that free throw line, you shoot the ball and you're trying to get away quickly. There's no place to go. Keep yourself on balance, shoot the shot, and stay on the line. David Johnson comes in, Lidwood Davis sits down. Now, Johnny Orr told us that the big lineup bothers him. That's what Johnson will give Oklahoma. Well, he's going to give them, you know, David Johnson and Wayman Tisdale, Daryl Kennedy, all big-type, strong players. They might overpower Iowa State inside. They've got to keep the ball outside. 9-6, the Cyclones of the lead. Inside, Tisdale, beautiful drop step. Raymond Tisdale makes it a 9-8 ball game. There's Stevens breaking the pressure. He can handle it. Now's the time when the guards take control. You're in the half-court situation. Here's where Hornacek and Stevens really are the big part of this team. That's one thing Kansas may have lacked last night against this team, the guards that could do that. You better have strong guards when you play Oklahoma. There's Grayer. Jeff Grayer on the all-Big 8 freshman team nails one. He was also on the all-defensive team, Gary. He's come in as a freshman and played great basketball. And the only freshman on that team, we might add, the defensive club. Iowa State 5 of 7 for the field. McAllister counters at the other end. You just can't celebrate when you score against Oklahoma. They're going to come right back at you. Tom Peterson gets it off to Grayer. Here's Hornacek. They are just exactly doing what they did last night, shooting and hitting that outside shot. Well, what I see right now is a very confident basketball team. I don't think they're intimidated by the Oklahoma ball club at all. They, they're taking the shot and shooting it with confidence. Boy, through the hands of Johnson, but McAllister able to save. Cyclones by three, 14.42 to go in the first half. This is for the Big 8 Kearney Championship. Into David Johnson, and he walked to the ball. We're going to have a timeout. Billy Tuck's team trailing by three with 14.35 to go in this first half of play. The Oklahoma Sooners, they were denied the tourney championship a year ago. They don't want it to happen again. Well, sixth in the nation in scoring, and we're going to see how well he maneuvers inside. Well, Wayman Tisdale plays so well box to box, Gary. He's going to get good position. Sam Hill's going to front him. He's going to get around in front. The weak side help Peterson is just a little slow coming over. And when he does, Wayman Tisdale makes him pay. He's averaged almost 26 points a game. He had a high this year of 55. He's the most dominating player in the Big A Conference since Will Chamberlain. He has such a great body on him. You know, when you watch him play on television, you don't get a feel for his energy and enthusiasm, plus also his great physical size. He is just a marvelous athlete. Iowa State is shooting 75% from the field now. The first half last night against Kansas, they shot 64%. They've had the, the guys they want taking the shots, and here he is, Barry Stevens. Inside the hill. Nice pick and roll that time, Gary. He jumped in the air to start to shoot Stevens. He drew two defensive people and dropped it off for an easy layup for Sam Hill. Five-point lead for the Cyclones, and Iowa State has answered the fact that last night's physical demanding game has not hurt them at all. They've come out playing well. Now that's what they've got to stay away from. That can devastate you as a team to come out and play well and have teams alley-oop the dunk. They've got to do a better job with their body, keeping him away from the basket. Johnny said that big lineup does that to him. He really was concerned about that coming into the game. We see Anthony Bowie now is even playing guard along with McAllister, so they've gone with big guards as well. They've really got a big team in there now. Sam Hill, who's a big surprise this year. Hornacek, by the way, just hit the deck on the baseline, gets up. Boy, he's a tough kid. He is aggressive. Walk on as, as well. Here's Peterson, only averaging two points a game. That hit the side of the glass. But he's been the guy they put in there for some good chemistry. Starting the last five games, Hill bats it away. Tisdale has it. Follows his own shot. Johnson. And Oklahoma eventually loses the ball. Well, Iowa State dodged the bullet there. Oklahoma playing volleyball on the offensive backboard. Could not get it to go, but Iowa State has got to limit multiple shot opportunities. Look at this game, Doug. Notre Dame, second overtime, 74-71. That's a very big game as far as the tournament committee is concerned. That'll also uh, depend or determine who's going to have the top independent record this year. Notre Dame was seeking their 20th win of the year. 
Here's Peterson, kicks it out. He threw it away. Peterson a little shaky in the early going. As we mentioned, he was not a starter until down the stretch. He replaced in the lineup Gary Tompkins. The Tompkins may be back in with a kind of pass like that. 15-12, Iowa State, 12 and a half to go in the first half. Tisdale, and he's fouled. He's going to go on Hornacek. His first, second team foul against Iowa State. It's a nice play by Hornacek. He doesn't get there in time, but he's going to try to take away the lob. Wayman Tisdale fronting. Here comes Hornacek. He just didn't quite get there on time, but that's the way you've got to sneak over there and not allow Tisdale, after he's fronted, to just roll to the basket uncontested. Louisville inbounds. To Kennedy. They'll kick it back out to McAllister. McAllister started the year after two surgeries on his knees has come back full steam now physically. Iowa State is now in a zone defense. They'll go zone on inline out of bounds. There's Bowie. Bowie's been relatively quiet. Johnson just took it away that time and Hornacek will end up with another foul. Donnie Orr is up and the man who coached 12 years in Michigan in his fifth year at Iowa State has seen it all, but I don't think he's seen that for a while. I think not only is he upset about the foul, he, don't, he doesn't feel David Johnson was in the act of shooting. He's going to be at the line shooting, too. But we saw an example right there of just brute strength. David Johnson just muscling the ball away from Jeff Hornacek. Johnson, they list him at 238 pounds. He's got to weigh at least 20 pounds more than that. He is a huge man. Well, he's had a lot of leg problems, too, and I think that really forces him to struggle with his weight. Two-point lead now for Iowa State. Here's Peterson. Peterson looks unsure of himself right now. Well, they're just playing so far off of him. He's so wide open. I think right now he doesn't know what to do with the ball. Stevens is fouled by Bowie. Bowie says he was being pushed off, but that's not what John DeBrow says. And Bowie commits his first foul. Well, Anthony Bowie is an excellent defensive player, as well as McAllister. McAllister was on the all-Big 8 defensive team, and they've tried to come in to shut down Barry Stevens. It's a timeout. Iowa State by two with 12 to go in the first half. CBS Sports will be going to Aspen, Colorado. And Bill Johnson, you talk about an all-out effort, will be trying to defend his title in America's downhill. He is something. He's on the edge all the way. He's also a free spirit. He loves to get out and compete. And also coverage of the World Figure Skating Championships from Tokyo. That's following this game. Right now, Iowa State has not been in any kind of an awe-stricken mood as far as this Oklahoma team is concerned. We see the offensive rebounds. Oklahoma, five multiple shots. Iowa State, none. The key there is that Iowa State is shooting so well that they've been able to stay in the game right now. Yeah, they were shooting 75% just a moment ago. Not a lot of second shots when you shoot like that, is there, Gary? <laughs> Hit six of their first eight. That's exactly right. 15-13. Iowa State with the advantage. There's a field goal percentage. Iowa State now at 70. We see Oklahoma now coming out 2-3 zone. This is a little bit out of the norm for them. They like to play man-to-man. Rare -man. double teamed, almost out of bounds, and McAllister's got it. That's the third turnover against Iowa State. I think that turnover was caused a little bit out of surprise there, Gary, seeing that zone. Hugh Kennedy, who was the Oklahoma High School Player of the Year, coming out of Oklahoma City his senior year. Into Tisdale, and it batted away. It'll be off of the Cyclones. They're getting that ball inside to Tisdale. Well, what tough matchups they have. We got Tisdale being played by Sam Hill, and he's just so much more uh, physically strong. Fortunately, they're good help defense. Back to the live action, inbounds to Johnson. He is fouled. Johnson going up, and he'll be going to the free throw line. Peterson will pick up the foul. That's his first. Fourth team foul. Here is Peterson. He's out of Fort Dodge, Iowa. He's their strongest player, excellent defensive player. And the thing that they put him in there for was chemistry, but also the fact that he did some very important things for him at the end of the game. Also, too, he gives them a little bit more size with Barry Stevens at forward and Tompkins also starting. They didn't have the physical size. He's a banger and does a pretty nice job in there for his uh, lack of physical size on the front line. A one-point lead for Iowa State. They'll take their time. Johnny Orr says, well, milk some time and, and get the shot we're looking for. Iowa State does an excellent job skip passing over zone defenses and finding Barry Stevens. Actually, Oklahoma playing Barry Stevens man-to-man -man now. Anthony Bowie, they're in a boxing one defense. Here is Stevens. Bowie was up in his face at the time playing the good defense. 
Oklahoma the chance now to take the lead at the 10:48 mark and a foul has been spotted by Ron Spittler. It's going to go on. Let's check it for sure. Is it going to be Hornacek again? I think they've called that on Sam Hill. Uh, let's wait and see. It is Sam Hill, I believe. Hill's first. You saw that score in the Metro Conference. Memphis State, along with Oklahoma, vying for one of those top four seats in the tournament field, which we'll announce tomorrow here on CBS. Here's McAllister. Brayer, an impressive rebound. Jeff Brayer out of Northwestern High School in Flint. Very important right now for Barry Stevens not to get frustrated when he's being chased and take bad shots. Brayer with Kennedy on top of him still hit it. Boy, what composure for a freshman. He's come out and really played well early in the ball game. Our statistician Mike Swanson indicating Oklahoma now has missed their last five shots. Remember, they shot so well last night in that first half, but not so in this first half. But the steal almost by Stevens. Bowie to Johnson. He's fouled. Iowa State's picking up a lot of fouls inside. It's going to be on Hill again, and that will be his second. Sam Hill is a good shot blocker. He set a school record this year at Iowa State. But when you're going against bigger people like this and you're trying to block shots all day long, eventually you're going to pay the price and get in foul trouble. And he's fouled out of 11 ball games this season, which is a school record. And Johnny Orson, that's a key to our team. We cannot have Hill in foul trouble. They do have another 6'9 man, David Moss. But Moss is playing on a bad knee. He actually started 25 games for the team last year, David Moss. But, Gary, as you said, he struggled with a knee injury, lost a lot of confidence, doesn't have quick feet. And when you have to come in and play against Oklahoma, you better be able to move. Iowa State lead has been cut to one. Stevens, they've really pushed him out on the floor a long way. Hornacek in trouble. Here comes McAllister. Bowie filling the lane very quickly, but McAllister will pull it out. Duke Kennedy with Peterson on top of him. McAllister will go inside to David Johnson. David Johnson really coming in playing well. He's given him a great lift off the bench. And Gary, as we talked to Johnny Orr this morning, he feared this lineup that Oklahoma has on the floor right now. Oklahoma their first lead of the ball game, 18-17, with 9-12 to go in the first half. Not a very high scoring first half. Iowa State showing very good patience right now. They're in the half court. They must get a good shot, not force a quick shot. Last time, Jeff Hornacek got caught up in the air and a very uh, careless turnover. Oklahoma scored over 100 points the first two games of this tourney, averaging over 91 a game. Sam Hill missing, Johnson high on the rebound. The way this game's going, they're not going to reach 100 this afternoon. Six rebounds now for David Johnson. Baseline to DJ. Rebound Hill. Hill is holding his own in there. Good position on the boards, keeping Tisdale off that offensive glass. Hornacek is pushed from behind. He almost went into the nickel seats that time, and he'll be going to the free throw line. Well, this should be money in the bank. Uh, Jeff Hornacek, uh, almost an 85% free throw shooter on the season. Johnson committed the foul. Let's watch the rebound position. Sam Hill, look, he's got Tisdale pinned on his back. He knows where he's at. He's not going to get into a leaping contest with him. Hornacek now is just going to push the ball up the floor. He takes it the length of the court and is pushed from behind. You said he is deadly from the free throw line. Over 84%. The school record, by the way, in a season is 81.8, so he looks like he'll have that. Gary, when you've got two excellent guards, as Hornacek and Stevens are, they can both shoot free throws. When you get into the lead, you can do a lot of things, and I'm sure that that's what Johnny Orr would like to see today. Iowa State retakes the lead, 19-18. Tisdale, boy, did he bump Hill on that play. And they're going to call him for a charge. That's a good call right there, Jim. Excuse me, Sam Hill holding his position. Gary, he does not reach in. He's going to hold his position. Wayman Tisdale forcing the contact. It was just a little bit of a drop shoulder there that caused that foul. And that's a great play by Sam Hill. Tisdale weighs 250, Hill 215. It was very evident the difference in size on that play. That's the second foul, by the way, on Tisdale. 15 foul against Oklahoma. 
Oh, nice set play there to get Barry Stevens a shot. He just couldn't get it to drop. Stevens started slow last night. He hit only three of seven in the first half. Looked like he was going to get off very quickly in this game, but now cool. Well, the Oklahoma has done a good job taking him out of those easy shots, Gary. He's having to work very difficult now just to get the basketball. To Kennedy wheeling in on Peterson. Hisdale is there. Hill is there, and Hill has committed the foul. That's his third, and that's what Iowa State did not want. Understand we have a final now in that Dayton Notre Dame game and Notre Dame has won in two overtimes That was at Dayton Digger Phelps we had his game last week says we'll win at Dayton and I looked at him He knew how big a game that was and they'll be in the tournament now. That's 20 wins That's three straight wins too at the end of the season that they had after a tough loss to Butler That's a very very important win for Notre Dame They really put the pressure on themselves with that loss at Butler Tisdale at the line and Sam Hill now with three personal fouls. Johnny Orr is going to make a move. He'll get him out of there. He's going to bring in David Moss. Tisdale. Look at the stats on Tisdale. 25.8 scoring average, 10.3 rebounds, 56% for the field, and 78% for the free throw line. Gary, if he decides to stay around next season, he's got an opportunity to shoot for Pistol Pete Maravich's all-time NCAA scoring record. Pete Maravich did it in three seasons, averaging over 44 points a game for his career. The only game he didn't get double figures. You saw that graphic was in the tenth. They held him to six. Tisdale hits them both. Oklahoma, for the second time, has a one-point lead. One o'clock Eastern, Bill Frieders, Michigan Wolverines, the Big Ten champions. You know, the last time Michigan won the Big Ten was when Johnny Orr was the coach. That was in 1977. That'll be in Bloomington, Bobby Knight's crew. I tell you right now, Bill Frieder is my coach of the year, Gary. And then later tomorrow, Doug, you and I will be here in the headquarters of the Men's Basketball Selection Committee and we'll announce that 64 team field. And they are talking about the last 14 teams, giving them a lot of problems. There's a lot of parity when you get down to the last 14. Well, I'm really excited about that tomorrow. It's my first year doing college basketball and I've never done that show and I'm really excited about it. It's like a final exam. They throw it at you at once. <laughs> 2019, Oklahoma with the lead. 7.18 to go. First half, Horn a sec. Rebound by Barry Stevens. That's Iowa State's first offensive rebound of the game. That's their second. <laughs> Stevens just keeps after it. Finally gets it to go down. When you're not hitting a shot, move in closer. Well, that's the importance of multiple shots right there. Barry Stevens hanging with it, finally getting it to drop. Iowa State by one. McAllister baseline out to Chew Kennedy. Intended for Tisdale. Look at the hands he has. He can catch it. Reminds me a lot, hands-wise, of Rodney McRae, who used to play at Louisville. Remember how well he used to catch the ball in traffic? Exactly. Callister, they're going to have to jump out. He has the good range. Chu Kennedy, rebound, Peterson. And we're going to have traveling double dribble on Hornacek. I've noticed a couple of times Hornacek looks a little tired. He's supposed from last night, late well, they, in the game. They played so hard last night, and the number one seed has the benefit of playing the early game to get the extra two hours rest. I think that's a big factor today. Iowa State just plays so hard all the time. They do not have that much depth. They'll go maybe seven deep, and that's all. They sign Tisdale. Johnny Orr thought Tisdale traveled with the ball. You can see right now that David Moss just has a difficult time getting up and down the floor. That leg is really bothering him. Wayman Tisdale just went over the top of him for a slam dunk. All of Tisdale's field goals, three of them have come on the slam. Moss will have to have surgery on that right knee after the year. There he is with the ball. Bad knee at all, he gets the shot. Nice pump fake there to freeze the Oklahoma defender, and then he got it off the glass. They need some production out of him with Sam Hill in foul trouble. Hill on the bench with three. Chu Kennedy. Kennedy not hitting. Rebound cleared by Moss. Well, he's upset that I said something about him. He's made two great plays in a row. Peterson into Moss. He travels the ball. He wasn't set. That was a tough play for him. Let's watch the All-American, the three-time conference player of the year, Wayman Tisdale. Wayman Tisdale has his hand in the air, pointing to the basket, saying, I want an alley-oop. He takes the pass and thunder dunk at the end. Now we'll look at that a little later. Here's McAllister, fouled by Barry Stevens. The basket will count. Let's go back to that play. He's going to catch the ball, and he does a smart thing. He gathers his steps and goes to the other side of the basket. Great play there by Tisdale. Gary, the key on this play is he realizes he can't dunk it all in one motion, so he gathers himself and now goes up strong and completes the play. 
a little flair there. Do you notice, though, when he put it away? Well, he's a showman. I tell you what, you've got to love him. He's one of those players that you pay to come watch play. McAllister missed the three-point possibility. Barry Stevens had committed the foul, his second of the game. A one-point lead now for Oklahoma. McAllister. That shot was too quick, Gary, for Iowa State, even though Stevens took it. It was still too quick. They need to run more time off the, off the clock. Tisdale again. There's the finesse to go with the jamming ability a moment ago. It's 10 points for Wayman. Iowa State now is at the point. They've got to come down, Gary, get a good shot. They forced a few shots from the perimeter the last time. Biggest lead of the game for the Sooners. Barry Stevens has not had the kind of shots he likes. He's really had to work for everything. Peterson off to Grayer. Very nice pass by Peterson. Oh, he got the defense in the air and dished into Grayer. That's a big basket. Grayer with eight. One point lead for Oklahoma. 429 left to go in the first half. David Johnson backs in on Grayer. Tisdale is there again. He missed it, but he's got it again. He reloads. He walked to the ball. He didn't like that at all. He thought he had two points instead of the travel. Wayman shot that first shot a little quick. He should have realized there that the man was not going to defend his shot and taking his time. He shot a little quickly as a result, missed the shot. He even misses in spectacular fashion. Grayer missing. Again, Doug is shooting awfully quick. Way too quick. They've got to run that clock down. Johnny Orr told us must be patient. Baseline, David Johnson. He's just going to pull like get that ball in, and Grayer commits the foul. Johnson takes up a lot of space in there as Grayer has committed his first foul of the game. David Johnson has already grabbed eight rebounds in his ball game. He's just spreading out in the lane and taking up all the space, and when the ball comes to him, Gary, he's reaching up with those big hands and just snaring it, going right to the basket. He's been to the free throw line as well in this ball game. This is his third time. Johnson started slow this year. He had a couple of bad ankles, got a little overweight, and that will be two points by McAllister on the follow. Peterson made a mental mistake there. He thought it was a two-shot foul, and when the shot was missed, he did not check out, and McAllister took advantage of it, slipped down the lane. This Iowa State team plays very smart, but there's been moments in this game where they have lost some of that, and it could be some of the physical drain of last night. Turn a second to Moss. Rebound Johnson. He has nine. Taken away by Grayer. What a play by Grayer, followed beautifully by Stevens. Oh, give Grayer credit there. That's why he's all team defense. He just took the ball away from David Johnson and Barry Stevens with a nice follow. Gary, we have a one-point ball game. Here's Tisdale adding to it. His repertoire. He now has 12 points in the game. How frustrating it is to work so hard to score and then they come down and just put it up so quickly and so effortlessly. State made only one change. Moss has come in for Sam Hill, who's on the bench with three fouls. Turn a sec off to Moss. And three seconds in the lane against Iowa State. Seven turnovers against the Cyclones. Jeff Greer's on the all-defensive team, and you'll see why in this sequence. Well, we see number 44 in the red uniform. He's going to try to get to the offensive board. David Johnson with a powerful rebound. He gets to his shoulder to try to prevent a quick outlet pass. Fortunately, he gets the steal, and we're going to see Barry Stevens come into the picture, number 35. Nice tip in. That was a big play because they could have been down by five rather than three. You know, it's amazing to me that Oklahoma's leading by three and they're shooting only 39% from the field. I think it's because of the second shot opportunities they've been able to get. Offensive rebounds, they have 11. That would follow what you just said. Three for Iowa State. Johnson has 10 of those rebounds. Now will go on David Moss. Moss with his first. Tisdale is just driving him crazy inside. Right now, we want to mention that the conclusion of this game, that Doug Collins and I will be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team, and Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. One thing that Iowa State has a difficult time doing right now with David Moss in the lineup, they have a difficult time fronting because he does not have the foot speed that Sam Hill does to get around, and Tisdale is just pinning him getting great low post position and just muscling the ball to the basket. 13 points for Tisdale. Now 14, 4-4 four, four from the free throw line. 32-27. Here's Peter.
Anderson, and look at this. Memphis State in the Metro Conference Tournament Championship leading Florida State. Memphis State beating Louisville last night. Stevens has a tough shot. See, McAllister was draped all over the top of him. I think that ball kissed the side of the glass and went in He'll from take an almost it. impossible angle. He'll take it. 13 points. This deal has to Bowie. Bowie's been quiet, hasn't he? Well, they've negated him by playing so much zone and man-to-man. -man. They're really going inside, and there's Linwood Davis. Now, they're out of their game when they have him shooting there, and here's Moss saved it off the of Bowie. Heads-up play by Moss. <laughs> well, he saw that he was not going to be able to keep the ball in bounds, and he gathered himself and found the first available Oklahoma defender to fire the ball off his leg. That's a heads-up play, and now Iowa State has a chance to cut it back to a little one. That's one of the few times down the floor Oklahoma got away from what was successful for him. Bowie, by the way, has not scored in this first half of play. Beautiful pass to Stevens. Movement without the ball, Gary. The toughest man to defend in the game is the guy who cuts without the ball because every defensive player is a ball watcher. Well, Barry Stevens says it's fun to play on this Iowa State team because we're always moving. We're relaxed. We're loose. It's also nice to play on a team where when you're moving, you get the ball. It's frustrating when you never get it moving. <laughs> and the Tisdale. Charge on Tisdale. That's his third. I don't know about this call. You've got to have a spot to be able to come down on the floor. Let's see if David Moss moves it underneath Tisdale as he's in the air. I don't know whether he ever had a chance to come down or not, Gary. Well, I'll tell you, Moss did a good job of acting on the play, and that was the reason for the foul. Tisdale will leave the ball game now. So we have Kennedy along with Johnson, Bowie, McAllister, and Davis. 114 now left in the first half. A chance to take the lead, Iowa State. Stevens going for that. Rebound. Strayer had it for a moment. Here comes Davis. Davis out to McAllister. Hill with three fouls. Tisdale with three. There's Bowie, his first two points. Beautiful pass. Bowie. Again, movement without the basketball. Anthony Bowie, a nice slash to the basket. Let's see if Iowa State now holds it up and tries to get the last shot of the half. 34-31, Oklahoma. You see the time left in the first half. At half, you'll get to meet the nine-man committee. The men's basketball committee has been leading since Friday to select the 64-team field. Great patience here by Iowa State. They're going to move the ball around. You've got the experienced guards, Hornacek and Stevens, who are going to be aware of the shot clock. Try to get a good shot, either with Barry Stevens, maybe coming off the screen, or maybe Grayer in the lane for a little jump shot. Nine seconds on the shot clock. You can see they'll have to get it off before the time clock expires, and Hornacek got it. That was a three-pointer there. <laughs> McAllister. And Iowa State battling back after trailing by five has cut it to one, 34-33. Coming up at halftime, we'll have a report on the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee from here in Kansas City on how they have to decide by tomorrow evening on the 64-team to invite to the tourney. Plus, Pat O'Brien will be along, and we'll have highlights of conference tournament action. We'll also tell you what to look forward to on Sports Saturday. All that and more at halftime. this commercial and station break all that will be coming your way we've had seven lead changes in this ball game the last lead going to Oklahoma they lead by one and a half and leading despite the fact they're not shooting that well from the field well we check field goal percentage Gary we see that Iowa State shooting 54 percent Oklahoma 38 so Oklahoma has really bit the bullet in that first half and hung in there offensive rebounds Oklahoma really dominating there well, you look at offensive rebounds, 11 to 4, but the key to me is what have you done with those second shot opportunities? We see now Oklahoma 14 to 4 off the offensive rebounds. Well, the number one and two all-time scores of the Big 8 going against each other, Wayman Tisdale and Barry Stevens. Let's just check what they've done in that first half of play. Well, Barry Stevens, 7 for 13 from the floor. He has 15 points. Tisdale had 14 points, but more importantly, he
He picked up his third foul, and that will be a big key as we start this second half. And Sam Hill also has committed three fouls for Iowa State. When he went out, it was 20 to 19, and then they went 14-14 after that. Well, you got to give David Moss a lot of credit. He came in the ball game, they went right at him, but he got himself together, hit a big hoop, and got a couple nice rebounds. And so Iowa State. Looking for their 22nd win of the year. There's the way the scoring has gone. Stevens with 15, then the Grayer comes in with eight. One second, that first half, Doug, only put the ball up three times. Well, the thing that impressed me is he got the ball to the people that were supposed to be shooting. He got Stevens 13 shots and Grayer seven. Those are the two guys you want shooting the basketball for Iowa State. Tisdale, that strong first half. To go along with the 14 points, he had four rebounds. Iowa State with Stevens, Hornacek. Moss is starting the second half. They're not starting with Hill. Peterson, and here is Barry Stevens almost losing the handle. And yep. Johnny Orr trying to buy a little time here, Gary, and not getting Sam Hill that fourth foul early, trying to go as much as he can with David Moss while he's playing well. On the other hand, Oklahoma starting the same five that opened the ball game. Tisdale playing defense, overshot. Peterson on the follow. McAllister rejected. Grayer saves it in. Moss had it for a moment. Here comes McAllister to Bowie. Boy, very quiet in that first half with only two points. Now he has four. Wayman Tisdale came very close to picking up his fourth foul. Barry Stevens drove baseline, and Tisdale bumped him a little bit. No call. Very fortunate break for Oklahoma. Ernestek uh, bumped a little bit by Linwood Davis trying to get the foul, and here is the game. For the Missouri Valley Tournament, Wichita State has upset Tulsa 84-82. Well, congratulations to my old assistant coach, Gene Smithson of Wichita State. Xavier McDaniel for Wichita State has an opportunity, Gary, to lead the nation in both rebounding and scoring this season. What a great player. Old high school teammate of Tyrone Corbin, who played so well for DePaul. 36-33 Oklahoma. Iowa State a little more patient. They took some quick shots in that first half. I'm sure Johnny Orr talked to him at halftime. Oklahoma playing tough man-to-man -to -man defense right now. Hornacek, and he is fouled as he penetrates inside. Linwood Davis getting a hand on him. Johnny Orr pleading the official. Two shots, two shots, and we'll see now if he's going to give him or a pass off. Davis committing his first personal foul. Wait a minute, they're going to put that on Kennedy? They gave it to Kennedy. Chu Kennedy committed the foul, not Davis. We stand corrected. Hornacek will inbound. 18.37 left the game, and there's going to be the fourth foul on Tisdale. I want to tell you right there, there's an experienced play on Barry Stevens' part. Gary, he went over and sought out Wayman Tisdale, set a back screen on him, Let's watch it here. Barry Stevens is going to seek out Wayman Tisdale, and Tisdale is just going to run right over the top of him. There was no question about that foul. You think they talked about that at halftime? Well, I want to tell you, that's a great play right there, and Wayman Tisdale just was not aware of where the screen was coming from. All right, let's mark this down now. Tisdale sits down his fourth personal foul at the 1837 mark, and let's see what happens to Oklahoma from here on. Well, David Johnson had a big first half. He had six points and ten rebounds, Gary. Well, one of the reasons was, was because Wayman Tisdale was in there. Can he carry the load with Tisdale not in the lineup? Now we're going to go back. We understand that that foul was on Lidwood Davis. We were right a while ago. I mean, the foul previous to the last one. Not to confuse you. In other words, the last foul was on Tisdale, but the foul before they had whistled against Chu Kennedy, which is in fact was Davis, as we thought. Iowa State is upset because the public announce man came on and said that last foul was not on Tisdale. Oh. And Johnny Orr said, wait a minute. Johnny Orr showed me some quickness on that one. He got off the bench. We hear the crowd now. They've just corrected their error and they're cheering. Inbounds to Moss, wide open. They went sleep defensively there, and it's a one-point game. How about David Moss today? He's playing very well. And it goes to Chu Kennedy. Kennedy missed that shot in the first half, but he gets this one to go. I know this sounds crazy, Gary, but you know what's a tough thing right now for Iowa State? Not to relax and think because Tisdale's out of the ballgame, this is going to be easier. That is far from the case. Chu Kennedy proved that. Remember in the Kansas game when Tisdale had only six points, he had a career-high 34. Oklahoma averages 91 points a game. They have a lot of people who can score. Barry Stevens, and that is... Uh, a good sign for Johnny Orr's team to see Stevens hit that shot. He 
He was 7 of 13 from the field in the first half. One point lead for the Sooners, David Johnson. Hornacek, I believe, or is it Moss? We're waiting now. Hornacek, I believe it's called on Hornacek. It is. It's his third. Moss thought it was on him. Hornacek thought the same thing, but nothing doing. David Moss slid over and got pretty good position. Hornacek reached in, and that's old ticky-tack reach-in foul that he got called for. We see Marquette 38-33 over DePaul at halftime. Paul and Marquette both wanting to get into that NCAA tournament. Well, that would take the pressure off of Joey Meyer if he could get into the NCAA field. David Johnson missing. Johnson is not a good free throw shooter. He's shooting 63%. He's four of eight here this afternoon. Gets the roll. Two-point lead for Oklahoma. A little pressure now. Hornacek playing with three fouls. Sam Hill on the bench with three. Tisdale with four. Just update you. Davis has one foul, two Kennedy one to revert back to what we originally thought on that foul previous to Tisdale. Here's Grayer. He overshot it. Moss trying to keep it alive. David Johnson has it and with authority. Seventh rebound of the ball game for David Johnson. Boy, lost the handle but saved it. Here's McAllister. <laughs> Nice pull-up jump shot. David Moss was going to take the charge, and McAllister got himself under control and hit a nice little pull-up jump shot. Gary, I think that's the most difficult shot in basketball to hit. McAllister now with 10 points in the game. 41-37, Oklahoma. Since Tisdale has gone out of the game, this crowd has picked up a little bit. The tempo's changed. Well, I think people sense without him in the ball game that Iowa State can win this game. They're, they were holding their own even when he was in the game. Five seconds on the ground. Ball will go to Oklahoma. That's nine turnovers against the Cyclones. again posting up on Moss he's in trouble he couldn't come up with the ball hit the bottom of the basket good defense David Moss did not leave his feet Hornacek Hornacek penetrating nice move by Hornacek what a tough nose player he is he's one of those guys you love to have on your team just step in front of a car to take a charge to win the ball game for you boy he and Cedric Hunter got into a shoving match last night and Hornacek in the estimation of Johnny Moore won't back down from anybody 41-39, Oklahoma by two. Two Kennedy to Johnson. He's fouled. Grayer got a piece of it. That's his second. Iowa State really scrambling on defense. We're going to see their quickness coming over, giving help. Two Kennedy's going to spot the open man. David Moss coming over to give help. A little slow on the rotation that time by Grayer. And just forced the personal foul and David Johnson at the free throw line. He's been there a lot today. This will be his tenth opportunity. He's five of nine thus far. Seven points, but 11 rebounds in the game. <laughs> Oklahoma, other than Johnson, pretty good free throw shooting club. You have Kennedy at 79, Tisdale 78, 80% for Bowie. We're going to have a substitution for the first time of the game for Iowa State at Ron Virgil, number 11, a junior out of Chicago. We call him the Iceman. And here is an ACC tournament game in the semifinals. Georgia Tech, the 47-44 lead over Duke. Stevens on the breakaway, and he's fouled by Bowie. Anthony Bowie showing great sportsmanship there, too. He went over to help Barry Stevens out. What a great set play out of bounds. You're just going to run Barry Stevens long, number 35. He's going to take a step forward to pull the man, and then he's just going to outrun him down the floor. Who throws the inbounds pass but Hornacek? Let's watch the end of this play. Slam dunk with a left hand. He actually hit his head underneath the backboard. That's how high he was up on that play. Billy Tubbs team leading by two, maybe one, if Stevens can make this a three-point play. Rebound by Duke Kennedy. 15-59 to go in the game for the Big 8 Tournament Championship. Oklahoma State, one of the top four seeds in the 64-team field will be announced tomorrow on CBS. It's Duke Kennedy and David Moss committed the foul. His second. Gary, remember what I said a while ago about letting a man come down and I thought that Tisdale's third foul was that way. That was what they called a block that time. So maybe it evened it up a little bit, huh? 43-41, Oklahoma by two. 
Collins, let's go back on this touchdown pass to Barry Stevens. Barry Stevens being denied the basketball on the inbounds play, but who makes the play? David Moss is going to come up. He brings David Johnson into the picture, which opens a total floor up for a long pass. And Barry Stevens with a slam dunk. Anthony Bowie, after the play, went over, made sure Barry Stevens was all right. A very class play as that play finished. Oklahoma at inbounds, they have a two-point lead. When Wayman Tisdale left, they had a three-point lead. Chu Kennedy missing, Peterson has it batted away. Chu will try again, and he's got it again. Out it comes to Linwood Davis. They can't get it to drop, and Sam Hill has just checked back into the ball game as the rebound. Hill Lib was on the basket, three shots, let him go. In this game, Iowa State has three more field goals in Oklahoma. Oklahoma State in the game at the free throw line. The foul will go on David Johnson, his second. 15 foul against Oklahoma. The Sooners have taken 16 free throws. Iowa State only five. Well, a lot of that is because Barry Stevens has taken a lot of shots out on the perimeter. You're not going to get fouled shooting jump shots. Added out of bounds by Bowie. 15-22 to go in the game. Iowa State had never been in the Big 8 tournament final. In fact, they hadn't been here in Kansas City at all in the years that they've had this postseason tournament. I sense right now Oklahoma starting to heat up the defensive pressure a little bit, realizing they're in a basketball game and trying to create some turnovers. This is Virgil who checked in a moment ago. Johnson with the rebound, and Johnson now with 12. 43-41 Oklahoma. Boy. Shows his range. Well, he's going to have to pick up some of the offensive slack for Wayman Tisdale being out of the game. Iowa State is getting in so deep defensively, someone has to hit that outside shot. Bowie had such a great first half last night against Missouri, but had only two points in the first half here. Now for six for the afternoon. He's also working very hard defensively against Barry Stevens. He's really trying to keep the ball out of his hands. Nice pick that time by Hill to Green Hornacek up. Iowa State, a nice job there. They're running screen and rolls, just letting guys get to the basket. Stevens and Hornacek coming off that high screen and doing well. Spinners by two. Let's see if Bowie will try another one. He does. Anthony Bowie out of Seminole Junior College in Oklahoma. That's why I say he's made such an impact a la w Walter Berry at St. John's, although he does not get the publicity. He's so versatile. He can play three different positions for this Oklahoma team. Second team all big eight pick this year. There's another screen by Hill, and Davis ran into it. Hill is doing a good job of setting those screens. It takes a lot of courage when you're 6'9 and weigh only about 215 pounds to stand there and take that kind of punishment. Linwood Davis is a short, stocky player, and he just barreled through Sam Hill to pick up that foul. Ran into his belly button on that one. <laughs> That's 16 fouls now against Oklahoma. Guard scoring has been very impressive for Iowa State. Stevens trying to add two more to it. We're going to have an over-the-back foul. It's going to go on Hill. That'll be his fourth. Nope. Four, three. Nope, they're going to count it on Peterson. And I know Johnny Orr breathes a sigh of relief there. Peterson with his second foul. Hill looked like he thought he was the guilty party. Well, he was. He got their second. <laughs> There's the backcourt scoring we're talking about. Cyclones really doing a good job with Stevens and Hornacek. And Bowie is fouled, and that's four on Hornacek. Hornacek with his fourth personal foul. Grayer will come back in to the Iowa State lineup. Virgil will leave. It's going to be interesting now when we see Tompkins in the lineup. Early in the season, Gary, he was averaging 27 minutes a ball game. Actually second on this team in assists. Made the all uh, Big 8 freshman team. We have not seen him today. Hornacek with four, four personal fouls. Got caught leaving his feet on Anthony Bowie who did the smart thing and drew the foul. Well, Johnny Orr hasn't made a move yet. Is he going to take him out? Now he is. He's going to take Hornacek out. As you saw a moment ago on the screen, both Tisdale and Hornacek with four fouls each. 13-33 to go in the game. Peterson brings it down. 48-43, Oklahoma. Hornacek's got to be very careful on this possession and not pick up an offensive foul. He's been slashing to the basket. Must be very careful. with the basketball. Oklahoma showing zone defense this possession. Rebound Hill. He lost it. David Johnson's got it. 
13 rebounds for DJ. There's Bowie's hit two from outside, moving inside. Tries to follow. That'll be off of Oklahoma. Substitution, and the guy that you were talking about, Tompkins, is coming in for the first time. Gary Tompkins out of Jackson, Michigan. He started all but four games for the Cyclones. We're going to have a timeout. 12.52 to go in the game. Oklahoma trying to win their 29th game of the year, which would tie a school record which they set last season. They lead it 48-43. Back to defend his title and the men's and pairs competition from Tokyo, Japan. Iowa State has not been to the NCAA tournament field since 1944, 41 years ago. Go and today they've hung tough against this Oklahoma team. Gary, I look at him as almost the Rodney Dangerfield of this conference. They've won 21 ball games and really have not got much respect nationwide. Here's Tompkins, who just checked in for the first time in this game. As we mentioned, he was a starter until he went back to Tom Peterson. Here is Peterson now with the ball. They're going to have to penetrate this zone defense. They've been on the perimeter the last few times down the floor. Tisdale, along with Hornacek on the bench with four fouls each. Johnson, a bull in there, comes up with it. Boy, what a game he is having for Oklahoma. McAllister fakes Stevens out of the way. Hill comes up, and Hill is fouled by Linwood Davis. That's his third. And that now puts Iowa State into free throw shooting. That's the 17 foul, as we mentioned. They haven't been there very much today. This is very important now. With the last 12 minutes of the ball game, they're going to be going to the free throw line on every personal foul. So now, Gary, is when you must attack the basket. But it's very difficult to do that when Oklahoma's playing that zone defense. So they've got to find a way to get the ball inside, maybe get Stevens in an area where he can get around the basket a little more and draw some personal fouls. Sam Hill, not a very good free throw shooter. He's a 65 percenter, but he hits that one. The left hand was dead solid on that one. The All Big Eight surprise team, the most improved player on this Iowa State team. You can see he leads them in rebounding. Forty-eight, forty-five. Remember now, when Tisdale went out of the ball game, Oklahoma led by three. That's what it is now. Well, thank Anthony Bowie right now for keeping Oklahoma alive. He's just taken over the offensive burden. Ivy on Grayer, and as he moves in, they have a foul. The basket will count. That'll be Grayer with his third foul. Well, no sooner with the words out of my mouth, Gary, that Anthony Bowie comes back again. He's going to take the ball right to the basket and score and draw the personal foul and have an opportunity to cap off a three-point play. Billy Tubbs says this is our most consistent player, and even though he had the shaky first half, he's come on strong. And as you mentioned, he has come on with their All-American on the bench. I'd say he's just such a valuable player to have on your ball club because he is so versatile. 51, 45, unselfish too. Coming out of the junior college ranks, making a fast adjustment to major college ball. Give a lot of credit to his junior college coach, Jim Kerwin, who's now an assistant with Oklahoma. Peterson doesn't take very many shots. Davis to McAllister. Beautiful play. Biggest lead of the game now for Oklahoma. This game is changing because of Oklahoma's zone defense. They are not allowing any inside shots, and Iowa State just cannot convert right now from the perimeter. And it says something that they have built their lead with Wayman Tisdale on the bench. Grayer. They needed that one. It's the first time they've gotten the ball in the lane area in about the last five possessions. Grayer with 10 points. He's averaging 11-9 for the season. 53-47. Chu Kennedy's had an off day shooting. Hopkins with a rebound. He's the guy playing a place of Hornacek, who's on the bench. Peterson lost it. Saved it somehow to Sam Hills in the right place there. <laughs> Grayer again. Peterson goes up. Saved by Linwood Davis. Tempo picking up a little bit now. McAllister again. He's fouled. What an effort by Tim McAllister. Well, you want to see a spectacular shot. This is spectacular at its best. Tim McAllister in the open floor, slicing through the lane. He gets fouled, and what's the finish on this shot? Off the glass and in. Talk about concentration. 
And now he'll be at the free throw line to finish off a three-point play. Battlester with 14 points. That foul was on Grayer, his fourth. So Iowa State getting into some serious foul trouble. Hornacek and Grayer both with four. This Oklahoma zone defense has really changed this basketball game around. Tim McAllister trying to walk off a knee injury. Memphis State, the regular season champs in the Metro, leading Florida State. That game being played in Freedom Hall in Louisville. And Georgia Tech leading Duke. Dwayne Farrell, I understand, lost for the year for Georgia Tech. That's going to hurt him. Isn't it? Oh, he was a really exciting freshman basketball player. Great leaper. That's, that's a tremendous blow to the Georgia Tech program. Arnasek is coming in with those four fouls. Peterson will leave. They can't wait much longer, even though he is in foul difficulty. And here is the update on the fouls. Johnny Orr now has the team on the floor that started the majority of the ball games this season. We'll see Barry Stevens move down to small forward. Tompkins and Hornacek will be the guards, and Hill and Gray are on the front line. They've got to get a little bit more outside shooting in this lineup, and he felt the game slipping away, and he had to get Hornacek back in. Peterson is not the scorer when you're trying to play catch-up basketball. Tisdale out. They were leading at that time by three, and since then they've outscored Iowa State 19 to 14. This goes to show you again, this Oklahoma team is more than Tisdale. Gary, I've seen it happen so many times. Grayer missed the Hill follow. Hill. Nice left hand follow by Sam Hill. The 10 15 now. It's a 55 49 lead for Oklahoma. Linwood Davis looks like he's dragging that leg that he fell on last night in the semifinal game. Picked out to Chu Kennedy. Again, Kennedy just not shooting well at all. In this game, he's 2 of 10. Arnasek wisely out to Barry Stevens. Stevens used it. will hit that shot. Not this time. Johnson with his 15th rebound. Barry Stevens looks like he's starting to think about his shot now, not shooting it in rhythm. And as a shooter, Gary, when you start losing confidence, normally you're going to miss. Well, you're right about Linwood Davis. He's really limping out there. Here is a move by Kennedy. They wave the basket off. The foul before the shot. And that's going to be five on Grayer, I believe. That's it. That's all for Grayer. So Grayer will foul out with 9.37 to go in the game. Ten points and four rebounds for Grayer. Just a freshman. This Iowa State team is going to be a good team next year. They've got only two seniors in the starting lineup, and actually Peterson shared one of those starting roles with Tompkins, the freshman. Well, Grayer really impressed me today because he hit a couple key shots when the game was starting to slip away for Iowa State in the lane area. Gave them some semblance of a score in the lane. So coming back in will be Peterson. Six foot five senior. 55-49. Oklahoma with the lead. Tisdale has been on the bench in this ball game since the 1837 mark of the second half. 79% free throw shooter is Kennedy. <laughs> Kennedy has not really had the strong game. He's had five points, but that's what you like about Oklahoma. Different guys can pick him up at different times. You don't score 91 points a game and get over 100 nine times in a season being a one-man show, and Oklahoma is proving that today. This might help them going into the tournament as well. Seven-point lead for the Sooners. reaching in that'll be his third when you're struggling with your outside shot what do you try to do you try to improve your position and get a better one Barry Stevens will escape dribble that time got Anthony Bowie in the air drew the personal foul now it's important for him to be able to capitalize and get these two free throws get back on track Doug what kind of a pro do you think Stevens will be I think he could be an excellent pro I had not seen him much but I like his ability and quickness to go out and play on the floor. I had heard him being more of a forward. Gary, I think he could be an excellent big guard in the pros. He has 20 points. Look at the difference in free throws in this game. Oklahoma with 22 attempts at the line. They're still in it. Iowa State 
trailing by five, nine, ten to go. They have just kept clawing away. They won't be beaten back by this Oklahoma team. To Kennedy has it batted away, saved by McAllister. Hopkins playing some tough defense. McAllister, he's fouled by Tompkins. Gary Tompkins, 6'3 and a half. He was a prep All-American. He was a number three in the Mr. Basketball balloting in the state of Michigan. He averaged triple-double numbers in high school. Points, rebounds, and assists. That time, he had excellent position defensively, but at the last moment, he threw his body out and body-checked McAllister and allowed him to draw the personal foul. Hey, Gary, you shoot it. Go. McAllister able to make it 57-51. 57-year-old Johnny Orr, and best year Iowa State's ever had. And in his fifth year, he started to put it all together for the Cyclones. Hard to believe they never had a 20-win season prior to this year. Every year he's been there, his team has improved. Sam Hill, left-hand hook. Beauty. Eight points. this pesky Cyclone team. Well, anyway. you're going to have to cut their heart out to get them to die. They're not going to stop playing. Linwood Davis. That's the shot they wanted him to take, and he hit it. Davis with four. Gary Stevens has been very quiet in the second half. There's Hill again. Drew Kennedy brings the rebound down. Baseline, Johnson, one a sec on the rebound, off to Tompkins. Nice play defensively by Davis. It'll be Iowa State's basketball. We're going to have a timeout. 7.44 left to go in this title game, the Big 8 tournament. CBS's sports coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this word from your local station. This is tournament championship second half. Memphis State now had that lead whittled down by Florida State. 65-63. Now DePaul has overtaken Marquette. Notre Dame earlier winning today against Dayton and Georgia Tech ahead of Duke, 71-62. Temple in the Atlantic 10 leading Rutgers, 44-35. And this game, 60-53, Oklahoma with the lead, 7-44. Left in the game, Tisdale's only played 20 minutes in this game. With four, and he's still on the bench. We'll see if Iowa State can free Barry Stevens for an open jump shot here. Try to get him going again. He's only two for six in the second half, eight for 19 on the game. That's the guy they don't want shooting, and Peterson can't get it to drop, and Peterson had it, and then it went off his foot. Understand that uh, Duke game, Georgia Tech game, is now final, so the Yellow Jackets won that one. 75-64. Bobby Crimmins' team. He was my roommate at the Olympic trials in 1972. Woo! Turned out pretty well despite all that. Here is Chu <laughs> Kennedy wheeling in, out of control, but he was fouled. And that is going to be five fouls. Fouling out of the ball game is Hornacek. He'll be the second man to run out of eligibility for Iowa State. Virgil will replace Hornacek. He goes out with 10 points, two rebounds, and four assists. Because a combination of all these fouls from Iowa State, Gary, I think it's two things. I think you've got to give credit for Oklahoma being so aggressive, taking the ball to the basket. And secondly, I think the fatigue is a factor in this second half. Iowa State played so hard last night. They didn't finish up till about 10.30 or 11 o'clock here and had to bounce back early. The delay right now is Johnny Orr discussing the State of the Union with one of the officials. Billy Tubbs, meanwhile, at the other end, orchestrating his team. Well, I think the point that you're making is evident on the loose balls. A lot of the Iowa State loose balls they were coming up with last night, not today. It's not happening for them. I agree with you, Gary. And, and when you're a step slow or even a half step slow in this game, it can make so big a difference. Last night against Kansas, Iowa State, as you said, was getting every rebound, taking it away from them. They out-rebounded the Kansas team last night, 35-23. Johnny Orr is still, 
Sure. Over there trying to uh, figure out why his man fouled out of the ball game. <laughs> he didn't agree with the call, obviously. To Kennedy misses the shot. I think he thought maybe Kennedy was fouled before and wouldn't have two free throws coming. I agree. I think that uh, he felt that the ball was on the floor on the drive before he got the shot off. But his argument was not one, and Chu Kennedy converted one of the two free throws. 61-53, Oklahoma. This is big possession time right now. They've got to get this lead cut down now to six. They can't get into double figures at ten. Virgil will try one. Virgil out of St. Mel's in the Chicago area. His first two points, he saved it, and then he was out of bounds. Good effort. Ron Virgil is a very steady player coming off the bench. He can hit the open shot. He has enough range defensively to be able to play for you. He's got to be a factor if Iowa State is going to be able to come back and win this game today with Hornacek out of the ballgame with foul. Johnny Orr said that Virgil won five games for us this year down the stretch. He's in now trying somehow to pull this one out. A six-point lead for Oklahoma. 6.42 left in the game. McAllister. His own rebound. Move. 18 points. What quickness. He let the shot go. He knew it was not going to go. He followed his shot, pump fake, and scored off the glass. Here's Steven. He's just not shooting well. Virgil, the smallest man out there, almost had to follow. And stepping out of bounds is Johnson with the ball. It's just apparent to me, Iowa State running out of a little bit of steam. And I think Stevens is in particular now down. He played last night 38 minutes. When your legs go as a shooter, your shot starts falling short. And that's the problem Barry Stevens has had in this second half. Not able to get the ball to the basket. There's Tompkins in the hill. Broken up and a foul on Kennedy. Chu now has committed his third. There's Wayman waiting to come back in. He is the charismatic leader of this Oklahoma team. It's fun to even watch him practice. I wonder if Billy Tubbs has forgotten about him over there. His team is playing so well right now. There's only six minutes to go in the game, and normally Billy Tubbs will not call off the dogs until there's three minutes to go in the game, and he's up 20. And he gets criticized for that. The coaches in the Big 8 are not very happy with that. Two shots coming for Sam Hill. Well, he's resting Tisdale up for the NCAA. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they got six minutes and seven seconds right now. They've still got their hands full. This Iowa State team is explosive, and Barry Stevens is the kind of player that if he gets hot, he can throw in three or four quick hoops and get you right back in the game. Sam Hill converts them both. Six minutes to go in the game. Playing without two of their regulars who fouled out of the ball game. Oklahoma starting to milk the clock a little bit right now. Hugh Kennedy having a difficult afternoon, and the foul will go inside on the follow. Looks like Stevens over the back. David Johnson has been a big man today. He's a big man every day, but especially big today. Chu Kennedy having a tough luck on his shot. But here's David Johnson camping on the doorstep. It just goes up strong, gets fouled. He's actually the worst free throw shooter on the floor right now at 63% for this Oklahoma ball club. That was his 16th rebound in this game. Six of them offensively. He's like going around a refrigerator. <laughs> That's for sure. He's a wide body player in that lane. Well, they can cut it to four here if they can get one to go. Hopkins to try it. We got us a ball game, Gary. I'm telling you, this Iowa State team. They think they can win, and here comes Mr. Tisdale back, and Billy Tubbs, I think, aware of the situation. Steal attempt by Virgil, almost pulled it up, and here comes Wayman. Tisdale will come in. He left at the 1837 mark. They led by three. He comes back in. His team leads by four. He's out 13 plus minutes. It's not over yet. 519 to go in this title game. Iowa State's pesky. They're determined. They haven't given up. 13,200 on hand here at Kemper Arena, the site of the Big 8 Tournament Championship game. With 519 left, Oklahoma leads Iowa State 63 to 59. I'm Gary Bender along with Doug Collins and this Iowa State team playing without two regulars. Hornacek and Dreyer have fouled out. 
staying in it as Tisdale has come into the ball game after being out for 13 and a half minutes with his fourth foul. Let's see if Oklahoma on this inbound play tries to go right to Tisdale to get him going. He's been on the bench, as you said, over 13 minutes. McAllister, Davis, Boyd, Johnson, and Tisdale in the lineup now for Billy Tubbs. Johnson playing a strong game in the rebounding department. A little patience now by the Sooners. McAllister has been hot. Changed his shot that time. Follows again to Tisdale. Again, that second shot opportunity. McAllister, Gary, follows his shot so quickly when it go when it leaves his hand. He's right at the board, and that time spotting Wayman Tisdale for the follow-up dunk. Boy, he's an excellent rebounder for a guard at 6'3". Barry Stevens, he needs it. That might start him again. That time I, might have been a good one by Johnny Orr simply to let his team get a little bit of a rest before they started this last five-minute run. Stevens with 23. 65-61 Oklahoma. Now they're going to spread it out a little bit. You'll see Oklahoma, they're going to play three-man game out front. You've got Linwood, Davis, Bowie, McAllister. They're going to look to penetrate. If they feel they can take it, Gary, they will. They're going to run Tisdale and Johnson on the box, keep the lane open. They do not want to have a turnover in this situation. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Some Oklahoma's going to have to learn to do. There'll be no shot clock in the tournament. Foul away from the ball. It's going to be Hill, and that's his fourth. Sam Hill. He has played a strong game today. Got into foul trouble early, had to come out of there, has come back. Remember that sweeping hook he hit? Tisdale at the line, shooting 70%. Grayer, Hornacek fouled out. Hill now with four, Stevens three. Tisdale, two of the Sooners with three. That's a big miss. Raymond's been on the bench a long time. He's not even sweating right now. Going to the free throw line. That's a difficult shot to take right now. They can cut it to two. Virgil did it. And they call him Ice Man. And he's won some games down the stretch, so he has been in that position before. We're going to check Oklahoma's composure right now, Gary. At stake, one of the top four seeds for the Sooners in the 64-team field. It'll be announced tomorrow. They're abandoning that three-man passing game right now. They got to get it inside. Ava Johnson gets the bounce off the glass. Back to a four-point lead. Johnson with 11 points. Harry Stevens, he hit one a while ago, pulls it up to Tompkins. Kick, and they'll inbounds from the side. The Iowa State faithful. I don't know if they expected to be watching their team play this afternoon, upsetting 10th-ranked Kansas last night. Memphis State now trailing Florida State. Now, see, Memphis State and Oklahoma really are fine for that seed. We've seen a lot of upsets early in these tournaments. Wichita State, Tulsa, we're looking at one possibly now with Florida State. Baseline, Virgil again. This time, Peterson follows. That's a big basket, his first two of the day. Ron Virgil is attacking the defense. He's not staying on the perimeter, and he's creating a lot of problems. Close as they've been in a long, long time. A two-point game. 2.33 left, Bowie baseline, out to Davis. Tisdale again. That's his first point since coming off the bench. He has 18. Gary, this is very important right now for Oklahoma to play well under these conditions with no shot clock because they're going to need that kind of confidence in the tournament. A lot of people feel that they might suffer and maybe more than any other team in the tournament without that clock. Hopkins into Hill over David Johnson. Nice touch. Back to a two-point game. 12 points for Sam Hill. Steal attempt by Barry Stevens, a trap boy. A minute 45, you see it on the screen. Backdoor Davis, they left him alone and Hill rejected. They can tie it up. Tompkins, Stevens, rebound Peterson. 
Keep it in bounds, which is the key. And then Iowa State actually got everything they wanted. They penetrated through the defense and a wide open shot for Stevens that went in and out. Peterson with a second shot that wouldn't fall. And then Sam Hill over the back to foul out of the basketball game. You talk about a pivotal point in the game. Chance to tie, and now Hill is out. The third Iowa State player to foul out of the ball game. That means David Moss will come in, and Hill Trying to encourage Moss, who will take over with a minute 21 left. Johnny Orr told us today, he said, I hope we're not too tired. We can give the Sooners a good game. They've done that. Well, he has to apologize to no one. He's won a lot of fans today with the way this team has played. And I think also we've got to credit Oklahoma as well. Jerry, a lot of people felt that maybe not playing Kansas today might be a little bit of a downer for them. But I think they've been tested, as, as we can well see, all day long. Earlier this year, Oklahoma won by 28 in Norman, won by 7 in Ames, now by 2. Johnson, their fourth free throw shooter, 7 of 12, and he missed it. Rebound, Tisdale. He's fouled. A golden opportunity gets away from the Cyclone. Iowa State actually had two guys on that rebound, and they knocked the ball away from each other. And who did it go to? Right spot at the right time, Mr. Tisdale. And Wayman now at the free throw line. Gary, let's see if we can see this. It's going to be Moss and Virgil fighting for the rebound and see if they don't knock it loose from each other. Well, David Johnson, we had a good look at him. The ball's going to go to Tisdale, and he gets fouled, and he's at the free throw line shooting two. But he missed one a while ago. He got this one. Iowa State has had two moments in the last 15 seconds. Really big, big pivotal points at this particular stage of the game. Tisdale gets them both. Four-point lead, Wayman with 20 points. Minute 15. Iowa State needs to attack the basket. It's been good to them. See the timeouts left, the Cyclones with three. Peterson, who had a big basket a while ago. Tompkins, less than a minute. Stevens. Peterson is fouled. Peterson doing a good job inside in this last three or four minutes. Foul is going to go on Chu Kennedy, his third. Barry Stevens, a tough shot over Anthony Bowie. Look at Peterson work for position. Gary, he's doing it with his legs, not with his arms where he gets caught for a foul. He's at the free throw line. On 65 percent. 65 percent. These might be two of the biggest free throws in his young life. He gets the rebound. Doesn't get the roll. And it's picked off by Kennedy. So close for Iowa State to get a long ways from being done. And that is going to be backcourt against Oklahoma. One, rest, one official was going to call it. That ball was deflected. But he did not blow it. I don't think it was. Though. I don't either. The one official made the motion like it was deflected. And that's what... Uh, Chu Kennedy is trying to plead his case right now. It's been a frustrating last couple of minutes for Iowa State and Johnny Orr. They're down by four, 37 seconds. They've got to put the ball up. Attack the basket. Barry Stevens looking for a clear out so he can take it in. The man that's carried him all year can't get the shot to go, and we've got a foul on Virgil. The one thing that's impressed me, though, Gary, the sign of a great player is not being afraid to take the chance to be great. And Barry Stevens is the man they want shooting. He's done it. Now, he has not got them to fall. But a lot of times you see a guy miss a couple, and he just stops pulling the trigger. And he has not done that today. Iowa State has missed their last five field goal attempts. And they've lost so many excellent opportunities. They've missed free throw, and they didn't get the rebound. One and one now for Linwood Davis. Davis, 78% free throw shooter. Oklahoma now with 24 seconds of a 72-67 lead. We're going to have a timeout by Oklahoma. 
the sooner lead by six 24 seconds to go they have already captured the big eight regular season title trying now to add the tournament title to their collection with 24 seconds to go oklahoma with a 73 67 lead now the start of the day, a lot of people felt that Memphis State and Oklahoma were vying for one of those top four seeds, along with Georgetown, St. John's, and Michigan. The last we heard, Florida State was beating Memphis State. Oklahoma, the real scare now with some breathing room. Timeouts left, you see it, three each. They've got to put it up. Virgil does just that. Tipped out, Tompkins. Come on! And we're going to have a timeout call by Iowa State in eight seconds. Kind of shows the personality of this Iowa State team. They haven't given up, but oh, what an uphill battle they have. Play most valuable players of the game for Oklahoma, David Johnson, 11 points but 17 rebounds. And for Iowa State, Barry Stevens, 23 points and five rebounds. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. There was a 154 span of time there where Iowa State went without scoring and really hurt them. Well, Fester Rhodes has checked into the ball game now for Iowa State. Johnny Moore upset. His team lost the basketball. Oklahoma inbound. No time was taken off the clock. Boyd by himself. Foul by Tompkins. The basket will not count. So Oklahoma with a win here will go to 29 and five. That will tie the school record for wins in a season. And obviously they've got a chance to add to that as they head to the NCAA. We've been told now that the Florida State Memphis State game has gone to overtime. What an outstanding game that must be down in the Metro Conference Championship. Florida State coming from nowhere to give Memphis State all they can handle. This free throw by Bowie, it's all academic. Four on one, they're gonna let Tompkins take it. He's gonna end up timeout with one second. Now that's interesting at one second. One timeout left for Iowa State. It's a two-point game. Well, Oklahoma right now, their only concern is we don't want to commit a foul trying to inbound the ball. I'm sure what Johnny Orr will tell his players, let's see if we can pick up a charging violation off the ball somewhere. And, Gary, what I used to like to do is tell one of our players, go up and let the official know, watch me, I'm going to try to draw the foul to make them aware because sometimes they might not see it. Oklahoma, on the other hand, Gary, if they can't inbound the ball, the smart thing for them to do if they don't call timeout is just loft the ball softly, make it go into the backcourt, and make that one second go away. Now, you know, earlier this year, LSU lost the game on the same play. John Williams inbounds the ball, but he threw it the length of the floor. No one touched it, and they had the ball at the other end. That's why I said it must be softly. You don't want to throw the ball out of bounds because then Iowa State will get the ball underneath their own basket. Oklahoma may have been better playing a little more aggressively on that break down the floor because that one second obviously would have expired. You, you know, you just never want to give away an easy basket in a ball game. You want to contain, but I'm sure that one thing that Billy Tubbs has told his team is, look, we don't want to commit a personal foul. And as a player, what you do is you get very conservative and tentative because you know if you do commit one, that that coach will look right through you. I want to thank our statistician, Mike Swanson, for the excellent job he has done, as he always does, here at the Big A Tournament. Our director... Larry Cavallino, our producer David Dinkins, and our crew here, along with Richard Drake. It's been fun having the opportunity to do this game, and no one thought Iowa State would be this close at this stage. Let's see if they can draw a charging foul. I'm sure that they're in a full front position. David Johnson's going to call a timeout. Oh, you could see the expression on Johnson's face. He had a desperate look, didn't he? I'm a little surprised Billy Tubbs chose David Johnson to throw the ball in. I'm sure the reason he did that is because of his physical size. But David Johnson, not a great passer. Let's see if Billy Tubbs makes a change now and has a different guy throw the ball in and bounce. The look on David Johnson's face. Somebody would have taken a snap photo of that and showed it to David. <laughs> He'd probably burn it. I tell you, you know, there's a lot of people saying, hey, one second to go. It's a two-point game. You got the ball. 
Gary, the, the craziest things have happened. I mean, I've seen plays where a guy has scored at the buzzer and there's been a foul off the ball and a four-point play to win a game. You could just never, ever believe what happens in college basketball. That Memphis State-Florida State game, which has gone into overtime, we will be joining that game. So when this one concludes, as we expect with one second left, we'll be switching to Louisville and Freedom Hall. The state having kind of a similar game that uh, Oklahoma's having here. Neither Florida State or Iowa State figure to be that close at the end of the day. You know, Gary, another thing in college basketball that makes this such a different game than the pro rule is in the pros, you can call timeout and get the ball at half court. In college, you don't have that luxury. So every inbounds play is an experience. David Johnson will again be chosen to inbounds it. See if he just throws it down the floor. He got it into Boy, and that'll do it. That's the end of the ball game. The final score, Oklahoma. Oklahoma denied the Big A tourney title a year ago. Not this time, however, as they win at 73-71. Billy Cubs crew, Johnny Orr's team, what a valiant effort by the Cyclones. The best year ever in the history of Iowa State, and Oklahoma figuring to get one of the top four seeds. 73-71, for Doug Collins, I'm Gary Bender saying so long. Let's go to Brent Musburger and Billy Packer in Louisville.